I've done a little bit of investigating work off camera on the Mini, not too much, um, but I will go over it and I'll show you exactly what I've done. But I think, I think that we are going to have to do the head gasket on this car. I will tell you why in a minute. Um, I know in my last two videos I was like adamant that the head gasket didn't need doing on this car. However, upon doing a bit more research because I did want to be 100% sure on whether I need to do it or not, turns out that I think we do. Let me take you to the engine bay and I'll explain why I think that. Okay, so here we are in the engine bay as we have been for the last two videos. As you guys know, I've already done a bit of work on this engine. In the first video, what I did was I um, filled the coolant system up bled it properly and everything seemed to be okay once I'd done that. The car didn't seem to be overheating at all or anything like that so I was happy with how that had gone. However, I still wanted to do a coolant pressure test which I did in the second video as you saw. Uh, we stuck our tool onto here and we pumped it all up and everything seemed okay. The pressure didn't drop at all. Um, no coolant seemed to be leaking out anywhere. I took all the spark plugs out like I have right now. No coolant seemed to be leaking into the cylinders. I couldn't see anything in there whatsoever. However, what I want to do as well was I actually wanted to look properly in the cylinders to see if any of the pistons had been cleaned. Um, usually if you get coolant in the cylinders and it's burning away in there, then wherever the coolant is leaking into the engine, the pistons are usually cleaner than the other ones is essentially what happens. Um, so what I've done was I bought one of these things, which I think it's called an endoscope or something like that, which is essentially a tiny little camera. There's a tiny little camera on the end of there with some lights. Um, it's a wireless one. And I hooked up to my phone. I fed that down into the... Uh, spark plug holes, took the spark plugs out again, fed it down in there um, and what I found was not good. Um, bear in mind the engine had been run after I did the pressure test, um, it had been run for about 20 minutes, turned it off, took the spark plugs out um, and this is what I've found. If I can I'll insert the footage from the endoscope uh, that I took on my phone, I'll insert that footage into the video so you can see it, um, but I put it down into all four cylinders, cylinders two, three and four seemed okay. Um, no coolant in there, no nothing. Everything looked absolutely fine. However, when I put it down into cylinder one, um, we seem to have an issue. Uh, I think, from what I can see, there was coolant in there, which is not good. As well as doing that, I also made up this little tool here. It is literally just a pick with a piece of tissue taped to the end of it. I stuck that down inside. In fact, I'll do it live on camera right now, so you can see, this is cylinder one. I'll stick that down in there, as far as it'll go give it a little twist, pull it back up. I don't know if you can see on the end of that, there's moisture and it's not fuel. I was, I was smelling it. That is definitely not fuel. Um, I think that is coolant. So it turns out that cylinder one is leaking coolant in there. Head gasket must be gone on this cylinder between the coolant jacket and this cylinder itself. So after all that saying that the head gasket has not gone and I was like over the moon that it hadn't, it turns out that we are going to be doing a head gasket on this car. Um, it's not the end of the world and I'm not really that disappointed. It means more work for me, but it also means more content for the channel. Um, this Mini is going to be sitting here for a little bit longer than I expected and I'm not going to be driving it anywhere just yet. Um, but we are, we are doing a head gasket on this car for sure. The weird thing is though, I will admit, we haven't lost any coolant whatsoever. I don't know if you can see that, but when I first filled this up, I drew a line using a uh, pen on there and the coolant level is bang on where that line is. So I'm not really sure where the coolant is coming from, but there is definitely some in there. So I just want to quickly say as well, if you are doing any engine work or you're looking to diagnose a car or if you need to look inside the engine for whatever reason for piston damage, valve damage, anything like that, highly recommend picking one of these up. Um, I got it off Amazon and the brand, I don't know what the brand is actually. In fact, I've got the box right here. This is what it looks like. It is just a Wi-Fi endoscope. Um, and it hooks up to your phone, hooks up to your laptop, Android or Apple, this works on pretty much anything. So it was like 15 quid, 20 quid, something like that. Highly recommend getting one of them. It is a very useful tool to be able to get into the spark plug holes and look inside your cylinders because you can't do that usually. Now, because I have found coolant inside the cylinder, that should mean that cylinder gases or exhaust gases are getting into my coolant. So the first port of call today and something I wanna do just for sort of the sake of science and to show you guys how it works, is I'm going to use this tester which I showed you in a previous video. This essentially tests to see if there's combustion. This essentially tests to see if there's combustion gases inside your coolant, um, which will also confirm 
that the head gasket has gone between the cylinder and the coolant jacket. So we're gonna get this thing set up. I told you how it works in the last video, but I'll go through it again in this one. Um, and I'm just sort of curious to see whether it's going the other way or whether the coolant is just going into the cylinders. Be interesting to find out anyway. So the instructions are on the back here, it just says, uh, start the engine and leave it for about one to 10 minutes. Coolant must be warm and circulating. Pour test liquid into the test tube. No max the lower, insert some cotton wool into the lower part of the tester. It works as a filter for tiny coolant droplets. Insert the tester into the radiator. Suck air from the radiator into the coolant tank. Squeeze the rubber bulb to one to 10 times. If fluid turns yellow or green, a combustion leak is present. If fluid remains blue, a combustion leak is not occurring while test is in progress. So there we go. I'm gonna get this thing set up and I'll bring you back here. It does also mean that these spark plugs are gonna to have to go back in as well because I need to start the car up. There we go, that's all the spark plugs all back in. Um, I want you to have a listen to something real quick. When I start this up, right, every time I start this car up so far since I've had it, it's really bad at starting. Like it sounds like it misfires for the first like 15, 20 seconds, and then it seems to smooth itself out. And I think that that coolant being in there is probably the reason for that. If there's coolant in the cylinder, obviously it's got to burn that off first before it can start burning the fuel. So um, it must be the reason why it splutters. I'll let you guys have a listen. I'm gonna let it run for sort of five minutes, turn it off, um, and then I'll get the coolant thing set up and we can test the coolant to see if there is any exhaust gases in there. So have a listen to this and let me know what you think. Ready for this? It only does it for a short amount of time, but it is there. So we've been running now for about five minutes-ish. I have set up the tester. This is now what it looks like. We've got a little bit of the fluid in there up to the max fluid level. Put a little bit of uh, cotton wool in the bottom as well, that's what it says to do. A little bit of cotton in there just as a filter. A little hand pump. Um, and then you just squeeze this in the coolant. It's sort of up to, I think it said up to 10 times between one and 10. And the little liquid in there should change color if there is any combustion in there. Let me just read it again. It says if the fluid changes yellow or green, but the fluid is green from the factory. So that doesn't make sense, does it? Well, I guess we'll just see if anything happens. If it doesn't change color at all, then I don't really know what to think about that. Right, the thing is, this is gonna be pressurized now, so I don't really wanna take that off. It's gonna be hot and pressurized, and this could just Don't do this at home, kids. There we go, that went so bad actually. Right, so the lid off, there's the coolant right there. I'm just gonna stick this. It's gonna be hard to do with one hand, I might have to set the camera up actually. I know you can't see very much, I apologize, but I'm gonna have to do for now. Right, I'm gonna stick that in there. I'm gonna pump on this a few times. Well, it's turned blue straight away. So what does that mean? The liquid in it has sort of gone clear. Not, it went blue to start with. I'm gonna do it again. Let's try it again. So I don't know if you can see this. I just tipped some of that um, head gasket stuff tester in here and without even doing the test. Can you see that? It's turned blue already. There you go, you can see that. The stuff in the bottle is green. There you go. And then in here, without even doing anything, it's already turned blue. Is that bad? I think that's bad. 
All right, let's test it. Let's just do one more test. So I know what I did wrong the first time. You're not supposed to get any coolant in here. All it's doing is trying to smell the uh, like the vapor coming from it, I think. You're not supposed to mix the coolant with that blue or green liquid. Um, you're just supposed to be getting the gases in there, I think. Um, so I messed it up the first time. So as you can probably imagine, I don't really know what to take away from that test because I just did it again. And as you can see, um, I pumped the thing like 10 times and it's still blue. But should it be blue? Is, is blue bad or is green bad? Um, because the stuff in the bottle up there, like I said a number of times now, is green. This stuff's blue. As soon as you pour it in here, it goes blue. Is that bad? Is that good? I don't really know what to think, to be perfectly honest, um, because the instructions say that this is good, but it is changing colour, which is bad, surely. I don't know. Let me know if you've ever had experience with one of these things. Um, I want to do it anyway just to see if it brought up any results, but if, if anything, it's maybe more confused than ever. So, it wasn't really any good. Right, so, because that was such a rubbish result, and that's kind of made me <laughs> think twice about this whole thing, I'm gonna go ahead and do a live endoscope. I'm gonna use this little uh, camera. I'm gonna set up on my phone again. There's an app on here. Uh, I'm gonna set up on here, and then we're gonna go back down into cylinder one. I've already taken the spark plug out. I'm gonna go back down with the camera, and have a look live on here and see if uh, there's any coolant in there again. So you literally just turn it on, there's like a button on it, you hold it and turn it on, it lights up. And then you just hook up to your wireless um, on your phone, just go on your settings and hook up to it via Wi Fi, HD scope, you see that? There you go, HD scope. And then you just go on the app, which is Y camera, it's called, it just looks like that. And then you press start, and you can see, live, there we go, <laughs> it's a bit zoomed in this camera, but you can see that wherever I move it, that's where the camera will go, so you can see your cells right there. So we're going to go back down inside cylinder one, like I said, and we're just going to have another look, just see if we can see anything else untoward. It's also got a torch on it, if you can see that. You have the ability to make it uh, like dimmer brighter which is pretty cool right let's try this again all right so the camera is sort of set up you can kind of see what I'm doing all right there's the piston see there's no coolant on it anymore like there was which is strange can you see that on the camera all right I'm gonna record this anyway so I'll insert this footage into the video anyway so you'll be able to see from what I can tell there's no coolant in it at the minute but there isn't any pressure in the system either, so I don't know whether to stick my pressure tester back on it and then look down it with this endoscope again and see if I can see any coolant appearing. All right, so I've got my coolant pressure tester hooked up again like I had before. Um, it's pumped up to a bit more than it was last time. We're at about 1.1 bar, and the reason I've done that is because when I looked at the coolant cap, as you can see, it says there, that it usually operates at 1.1 bar. Um, I had it a bit below that last time. And so I figured I'd go a bit higher, just in case that makes a difference. I've actually already lost a little bit of pressure. Don't know where from, but we've already lost sort of half a, half a bar. We'll get our endoscope and have a look down in the cylinder and see if there's anything going on. Right, so I'm gonna put the footage in right now, but we found it. The head gasket does need doing on this engine. Um, there is a leak in that cylinder. Uh, I'll quickly just try and show you on my phone right now, live, but I have recorded the footage as well. You can actually see it. Can you see, that's, that's inside the cylinder right there. Can you see this here? That's water right there. You can see it dripping in. There you go. It's actually dripping from the top. You'll be able to see it. There you go. Damn it. All right, looks like we are doing a head gasket on this thing. So I don't think that anybody can argue that it turns out that the head gasket does need doing on this car. I apologize um, that in the first two videos I was sort of adamant that it didn't need doing, right? Um, but that's because from what I could see and from the tests that I'd done, 
it seemed like the hair gasket was fine to me. Um, it, I think it just goes to show that you shouldn't rely on the first test you do. You should do multiple tests and check every single avenue that you can. Before you deem something well, um, you should definitely do all the tests necessary to do so. Um, I highly recommend getting one of those endoscopes. Highly recommend getting the coolant pressure tester as well. Those two tools are what have led me to actually diagnose this today. And now I know 100% certainty, nobody can argue with it, the head gasket does need doing. Now it's not a bad thing really, because it means more content for you guys. Um, you'll see me rip down the engine, change out the head gasket and all that stuff. Um, I've never done it on a Mini. These are chain driven engines as well, so it should be interesting. Um, I've done the Corsa before, I've done an Astra before, but never have I done a Mini. But it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. Now I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this video here. It may be a little bit short, but I'm gonna leave this here. And I'm gonna move on to figuring out what's wrong with this door. As you know, the window doesn't go down. I'm gonna see if I can figure out what's wrong with it and try and get it fixed. Um, but I feel like that'll be sort of a bit of a mix in videos. I just wanted this video to show you that the head gasket definitely needs to do. And then just to let you know that's gonna be happening. I'll get all the parts ordered as well. I'll get the head gasket set ordered. I think I need to get a special mini timing tool thing as well uh, to set the timing on the engine and to keep it from going out of time while I'm doing the work. So I'll order all the bits that I need for the job. Um, should be pretty good. I do like doing head gaskets and it's been a while since I've done some in-depth um, engine work since I did my Astra. So it will be interesting to, um, to take this engine apart and actually get it properly fixed. I'm also glad that I did do my own testing, even though this has been to a garage and they told them that it was the head gasket. It was nice to do my own tests and show you how to do the tests um, to make sure that the head gasket has actually gone because I didn't want to do all the work. And then it turns out that there was nothing wrong with it. But now I know there is, I'm happy to go ahead and do the head gasket, it's not a problem. So look forward to those videos. If you enjoyed this one, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Um, I don't really know what happened with that whole head gasket tester. I don't know if it worked or not, but we don't need to do that anyway because we saw it for ourselves. If you enjoyed this one, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe for future content. Look forward to the head gasket video on this car. I should start to rip down the engine very soon. I will see you all in the next one.